Clearly, we need a way to control our family-wise error rate in the context of all these multiple comparisons. That is, we need a way to make sure we're not false alarming all of the time when we have so many different comparisons to make. And so we're actually going to develop two different methods depending on whether we planned a specific comparison or whether we're allowing our data to suggest a comparison to us. And so this is the distinction between a planned or a priori comparison versus an unplanned or post hoc comparison. Now a planned comparison is a specific comparison of means that a researcher was interested in testing before looking at the data. Now before here is really critical. If the data has suggested a comparison because you see that two means happen to look different, then you're using the data to choose which test to run. So a planned comparison is one that before you even ran the study, you knew you were interested in comparing. Now this is in comparison to an unplanned comparison. An unplanned comparison is any comparison of means that a researcher is interested in testing after looking at the data. So unplanned comparisons are those tests that were suggested by the data. Now we will have to be more strict with our corrections for unplanned comparisons because unplanned comparisons allow you to capitalize on chance. That is, if we just fit 100 different means in an ANOVA model, and only choose to look at the two that are most different, that unplanned comparison is actually capitalizing on chance. Because if the null hypothesis is true, you don't know which means will be most different by chance alone. So if you choose to only test the two that happen to be most different, you'll raise the probability that you'll reject the null for that comparison. So an unplanned comparison will require a stricter correction. Let's start with procedures for planned comparisons. Perhaps the most common is known as a Bonferroni correction, which is a very simple and elegant correction that you can carry out without doing any additional work. The Bonferroni correction states that the alpha level for each planned comparison, that is the alpha level you'll compare each planned comparison's p-value to, should be equal to the desired maximum family-wise error rate divided by the number of specific plan comparisons you are making. So the Bonferroni correction is as simple as taking the overall family-wise error rate you want to achieve, let's say it's 0.05, and dividing it by the number of planned comparisons you plan to make. In this case, let's imagine that that is 5. So if you have an overall alpha of 0.05 that you want to maintain, and you know you're going to be making 5 specific comparisons, then the alpha that you'll compare each comparison to will be 0.01. I found that simply by taking 0.05 divided by 5. Let's try this out with that hypothetical data for 1,000 people taking those 20 different drugs. And let's imagine that the overall alpha we want to maintain is 0.05, and we've specified in advance five particular comparisons we care about, A versus B, a versus C, A versus D, A versus E, and A versus F. So those are the only comparisons that we actually need to concern ourselves with. Let's produce the output like we did before. I'll go to the Analyze menu and select Fit Y by X. Next, I'll take Drug and put that as my X factor, and IQ I'll put as my Y response. When I click OK, Jump will return the basic dot plots for the different drugs. Before we run any output, Let's go to the red triangle, and under Set Alpha Level, I'm going to select Other. Now let's remember, we want to control our overall alpha rate to be 0.05, but we specified five specific comparisons that we know we're going to be making, A versus B, C, D, E, and F. So the alpha level for each of these tests will be 0.01, which is just 0.05 divided by 5. When I click OK, Jump will return nothing because it simply changed our alpha level. To produce output, we'll go to the red triangle and select an option. In this case, we can skip the means in ANOVA because what we're doing is each pair student's T, the specific pairwise test that we're interested in. When I click this, Jump will return all of the output, and I'll again minimize that LSD threshold matrix, but I want you to look at the comparisons of the connecting letters reports. Notice before we had actually some statistically significant difference, but now none of our drugs are appearing to be different. 
we've controlled for our overall alpha. Now let me go down to the order differences report because I want to point something out. Our p-values from this output haven't been changed. The only thing that changing alpha does is changes what criterion we're comparing each of these p-values to. And so without actually changing alpha in jump, we can just simply look at these p-values and compare them to that 0.01 criterion. Now I want to make a note. Jump is still formatting the p-values based on an alpha of 0.05. That's actually inherited from a global setting in Jump that applies to the table formatting. If you're interested, let me know and I'll show you how to change that formatting value. But for now, I want you to notice what Jump changed when we changed the alpha from 0.05 to 0.01. The confidence quantile, the one it's using to compare our p-values to, is now at an alpha of 0.01. So given that correction, we are now licensed to look at five specific tests. That is, we can look at drug A, which is down here, versus drug B, C, D, E, and F. And based on our Bonferroni correction, we can be sure that if the null hypothesis is true, we won't false alarm on one or more of those more than 5% of the time. That's what our Bonferroni correction allows us to say.